Greetings AP Physics and welcome to our video lecture on 21-08 combination circuits. So, let's start with a simple definition. So a combination circuit as you can imagine combines both series and parallel elements. So what does that mean? Imagine that you have a wire that branches off. And let's say that one branch has a lone resistor. Call this R1. And imagine that the second branch maybe has two resistors. Call them R2 and R3. So how do we analyze a circuit element like this? Well, clearly these two paths are in parallel with one another, but R2 and R3 are in series with each other. So what we might end up doing is adding up the resistances of any series resistors and then treating that as an R equivalent that we use to analyze the parallel branches here. So this is just an introduction to what a combination circuit element might look like. Um, and here, of course, is the definition. So let's go ahead and look at our strategy because we have a very, very clear strategy for dealing with these problems. And if you follow these steps, you're going to be very successful. All right, so step one of our strategy is going to be to draw a potential diagram. When I have students who are analyzing very, very tricky combination circuits, and they can get really, really tough, I always ask them, have you drawn a potential diagram? Because once you do, everything falls into place. It's a great way to visualize the circuit. So once we have that done, then we're going to simplify any series or parallel resistors. All right, our third step will be to find the total resistance, which we call R total. So once we've simplified the series and parallel resistors, then we can look at the total resistance of the entire circuit and find R total. Once we have R total, it'll be very natural for us to find I total. And that will be a simple calculation based on Ohm's law, where I total is equal to the total voltage, V total, divided by R total. Step five will be to label all voltage drops in the circuit. And this can be tricky. This is where we have to employ sometimes Ohm's law and sometimes we have to apply Kirchhoff's rules for circuit analysis to get all the voltage drops. And this is where we go back to the potential diagram. If we have that potential diagram drawn, it's very easy to draw and label these voltage drops in the circuit. Step six is going to be to label all currents. So once we know all voltage drops and we know all resistances, then we can label all the currents in the circuit. And then our last step, just to check our work and to make sure that the circuit actually makes sense, we're going to verify Kirchhoff's rules. So the rules that we discussed, uh, Kirchhoff's junction rule and Kirchhoff's loop rule, we're going to make sure that those rules are verified because if they're not, we've made a mistake. All right. 
So these are our steps, and let's go ahead and let's maybe take a look at our very first example. So there are two examples that really represent the kind of problems we can see in combination circuits. So let's call this example one. In this example, ooh, and let me pull up the example so that you can see it. There it is, okay? So we're gonna say, um, for the given circuit, which we're gonna draw together, find the voltage and current through each resistor and show that Kirchhoff's rules are satisfied. This basically gets us to really analyze this circuit. And at this point, if we can do this, we can answer any questions that anybody can throw at us about this circuit. All right, so here's the circuit we're gonna look at. We're gonna start with a 12 volt battery. So boom, boom, 12 volts. And the current is gonna leave the battery. It's gonna make a right turn. And it's gonna pass through a resistor. And we're gonna let this resistor be one ohm of resistance. And then it's going to make a choice. It could either drop through this resistor here, which has a resistance of three ohms, and then go back to the battery. Or it could choose to go through this other path and drop through a third resistor of resistance six ohms. And this here is the problem, very classic problem. You see this problem a lot on the AP exam. You see it as well on the Yukon exam, where we have a couple of resistors that are very clearly in parallel with each other and a third resistor, which is kind of in series with these parallel resistors because they're one after the other, just like in a series circuit. So let's go through our steps and see um, how we can analyze this circuit. So the first thing we wanna do is draw a potential diagram, which I'm gonna draw down here, okay? So in the potential diagram, I'm gonna start with the battery. The battery is gonna pump up the potential by 12 volts. So I draw a big arrow showing potential going up by 12 volts, okay? Then of course I pass through a wire and not a whole lot happens. Then I hit this one ohm resistor. Now what's the, vol the voltage gonna do when we hit that resistor? It's gotta drop, right? Because resistors drop that voltage. So we're gonna show a drop in voltage here. Now we don't know yet how much voltage is dropped. We just know that some voltage is dropped. But we are gonna label this resistor just so we know which one we're talking about. So we're gonna call this the one ohm resistor. So I'm gonna label this one ohm. And notice that I left myself a little bit of space because I'm gonna actually have to annotate more on this diagram coming up, okay? so. After my electrons pass through the one ohm resistor, they drop some potential, and then they go through another wire. So we're gonna draw the wire here, which doesn't drop any potential, ideally. And then we find that we have a choice. We could either drop three ohms back to the battery, which would represent this drop here. Three ohms, and then go back to the battery or we could go through the six ohm resistor, which would also drop us back to the battery. So this arrow represents the drop through the six ohm resistor. Now notice, the voltage drop across the three ohm and the six ohm resistors are exactly the same, right? That's what we expect. Because they're in parallel with each other, they're gonna receive exactly the same voltage, right? So. This is our potential diagram. We feel really good about it. Kind of reminds us of a cascading waterfall, right? So the waterfall gets pumped up through, let's say a pump, right? Then it cascades down through that first resistor. And then it has a choice. It could go through either path, but whichever path it goes down, it's gonna drop the same amount of voltage, okay? Just like a waterfall, if it goes down two different paths, it's gotta drop the same amount of height. This represents the same amount of voltage here. Okay, wonderful. So we took care of our potential diagram. Now we wanna simplify any series or parallel resistors. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, 
ooh, this one ohm is in series with this three ohm. Be careful about that. Because this six ohm resistor is over here, we really have to identify which two resistors can be simplified. Because there's an extra path over here, we can't just add up one plus three. But what we can do is we can look at the three and the six. So ask yourself, how are these two resistors arranged with each other? Are they in series or are they in parallel? And if you said that they're in parallel, you're absolutely right. Now, one thing that we like to do here, sometimes, you know, just getting started, it's not required, but sometimes it's nice to draw a dotted line around the resistors that you want to simplify. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze just what's inside this dotted line and I'm going to simplify these resistors. And because they're in parallel with each other, I'm going to use the equation that we use for parallel resistors. And that equation, of course, is 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So if I set this equation up, I get 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. And that simplifies to common denominator here is 6. This is 2 sixths plus 1 sixth or 3 sixths. And this can even simplify further to 1 half. Now, if 1 over R equivalent equals 1 half, we can take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation and we can get R equivalent over 1, or just R equivalent, equals the reciprocal of 1 half, which is just 2. So the equivalent resistance of these two resistors is only 2 ohms. Now you might look at this and say, well, hold on, one path is 3 ohms, the other path is 6 ohms. How could the equivalent resistance be 2 ohms? Well, of course, if you open up a new lane of traffic, just like we talked about during parallel circuits, if you open up a new lane of traffic, you have less resistance overall. So even though each of these is greater than two, together these two paths offer less resistance than either one alone. All right, so there's our R equivalent. So what I like to do sometimes on this diagram is say R equivalent equals two ohms. All right, and I feel like I need to move this. There we go. So R equivalent equals 2 ohms. So now I know that these two resistors behave like they have 2 ohms of resistance. So now I'm ready to calculate R total. Okay, so if this resistor is 1 ohm and these two behave like they're 2 ohms, then this resistor is in series with this circuit element. Because remember, series is one after the other. So this is one ohm followed by two ohms in series. So that means that our total here, we can write our total is equal to one ohm plus two ohms or three ohms and that is the total resistance in the circuit. All right, so we found the total resistance, and now we're well on our way. We're gonna go ahead and try to find the total current. So, let's take a look at what that would look like. And of course, by Ohm's law, we know that I total, is going to equal the voltage divided by R total. And the voltage that was given to us in this problem was 12 volts. And the total resistance we just calculated was 3 ohms. So that means that the total current leaving the battery is 4 amps. This would be a fantastic time to go back to our diagram. Both diagrams, I would say and we're gonna label that current. So that current of four amps, the total current that we just calculated, we're gonna label that on our diagram, okay? So here we go. Leaving the battery, we now know is four amps of current. That means that four amps of current have to pass through this one ohm resistor. I also like to label the four amps of current on my potential diagram. So 
through the battery we gain 12 volts of potential with a current of 4 amps. And you can imagine, when that current goes through the battery and goes to the wire, all of that current has to go through the 1 ohm resistor. So this would be a great opportunity to label this 1 ohm resistor as receiving 4 amps of current. Alright, we're well on our way. We're crushing it right now. Okay, so back to our steps. We took care of step four, which is to find the total current. And now what we want to do is we want to label all voltage drops. And this is where we have to be very, very um, skillful and very cautious. Okay, this is actually the fun part, in my opinion. So looking at this diagram, the potential diagram that we drew right here, we know that we went up 12 volts, right? Then we passed through the 1 ohm resistor with 4 amps of current. Check it out. We have the resistance of 1 ohm. We have the current of 4 amps. How could we find the voltage across this resistor? If you said Ohm's law, you're 100% right. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to apply Ohm's law to this resistor right here. So if we have a resistance of 1 ohm and 4 amps of current passes through, then Ohm's law says, obviously V equals IR, the current is 4 amps, the resistance is 1 ohm, and the product 4 times 1 gives us exactly 4 volts of potential dropped. Wow. Wow. So from the diagram, we gain 12 volts, we drop 4 volts. Now, Kirchhoff's loop rule is staring us in the face right here. If we gain 12 volts and then we drop 4, how much further do we have to drop here to get back to zero? Because remember, Kirchhoff's loop rule says whatever you gain in energy, you have to lose in energy. So if you gain 12 volts across the battery and then you lose 4 volts across that first resistor, that means regardless of what path you go down, you have to drop how far? Well, you went up 12, you dropped 4. How much more is there to drop? There's 8 volts of potential to drop, regardless of what path you go down here. Okay? Wow, that's amazing. We now have all the voltage drops. That's fantastic. Okay, what's the next step? Label all the currents. Well, we're almost halfway there, because we know that four amps of current goes to the battery, and we know that those four amps of current feed into that very first resistor, which you see there. So the question is, how much current is now going to drop through these last two resistors? Well, you may already know the strategy that we're going to use here. To find the voltage through the first resistor, we used Ohm's Law, right? Why don't we use Ohm's Law again, this time, to find the current? Because check it out. We have the voltage. We have the resistance. This would be a great opportunity to find the current. So, let's find the current. If we want to find, let's say we want to call this current here, let's call this current here I2. And let's call this current here I3. Okay? And then I1 would be appropriate to call the current through the first resistor here. Okay? How do we calculate I2? So let's, let's look down here through the 3 ohm resistor. If we have 8 volts of potential with a resistance of 3 ohms, isn't it fair to say, and I, I recognize this is getting very busy here, so let me do my calculation um, over here. If I want to find I2, I2 would be the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor, because again, I2 is the current going through the 3 ohm resistor. So I2 is the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor divided by the resistance of the 3 ohm resistor. So how much voltage was dropped? We argued that it was 8 volts. How much 
Resistance does three ohms provide? I mean, come on, three ohms. And then eight divided by three is gonna be 2.667 amps of current. Okay, so now we're looking for I3. How much voltage was dropped across I3? Well, if we go back to our potential diagram, we see that I3 is the current that goes through the six ohm resistor. And here, the six ohm resistor represents a drop of eight volts. So then in here, we say, okay, we're gonna take the voltage across the three ohm resistor, or I'm sorry, the six ohm resistor, divided by the resistance of the six ohm resistor. And how much voltage did we drop? Well, we argued that we dropped exactly eight volts. So that's eight volts divided by the resistance provided by the six ohm resistor is obviously six ohms. And eight divided by six gives us 1.333 amps of current. Wow. So we've done it. We found all the currents in the circuit. And now it's time to verify Kirchhoff's rules. Now this one is staring us in the face. So check out this diagram here. According to Kirchhoff's um, junction rule, whatever current goes into the junction, and by junction, I'm referring to this point right here. Whatever current goes into this junction is going to split. And those two currents have to add up to whatever goes in. Right? So that means that the I1, the total current leaving the battery, the four amps, has to equal the sum of these two currents, I2 and I3. And check this out. If we add up these two currents, if we add those together, wouldn't you believe it? We get exactly four amps of current. So the current in equals the current out. So in other words, I one, which is I total in this case, is equal to the sum of I2 plus I3. And that is how you solve a combination circuit. At this point, we could answer any question that multiple choice or free response question could ask us. They could say, hey, how much is the current going through the three ohm resistor? And we would be like, well, we found that. The current going through the three ohm resistor was what we called I2. We got 2.667 amps, you know? They could say, hey, how much power does the six ohm resistor use? And to find power, we could say, okay, the power across the six ohm resistor, I mean, how do we calculate power? Current times voltage, right? How much current goes to the six ohm resistor? Well, that would be the I3, and that's gonna be 1.333 amps times the voltage across the six ohm resistor. And if you come back here to the voltage across the six ohm resistor, you see eight volts. So it's gonna be eight volts there. And grab your calculators and let's calculate uh, the power through that resistor. So what we're gonna find is that we have eight times one is eight plus eight uh, times one third, or eight thirds, or uh, 2.667, right? And that's gonna give us 10.7, roughly, watts of power, right? We can answer all sorts of questions by knowing the current and the voltage uh, through these different uh, resistors. So there you have it. Um, that's our first example. Um, check in to the next video to see another example on combination circuits.